We've seen watches that can dive to depths of 100 meters, but you haven't seen a watch that defies gravity. Inspired by the apexes of engineering, the F-117 Nighthawk stealth bomber and the Apache 64 helicopter, these two astronic watches want to be luxurious without being so damn expensive. So are they worth it? Let's find out. Last week, I kept walking past this box of $1,000 watches in the TCF office. TCF being one of our partners upstairs, even though they have no power over what we say in our reviews. They were starting the Astronic campaign on Kickstarter, and they had all these lying around for photo shoots. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of watches. I don't need the jewelry or a one function device and I like the freedom of having nothing on my wrists, unless I'm training in the mountains with my Garmin watch. But I figured I'd give this Astronic a shot, because what would someone who doesn't like watches have to say about it? So I snuck one out and wore it casually to a wedding. I'm, I'm going to give it back, of course, or should I? Should I keep it? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Because this is the first tourbillon watch I've ever worn. And I don't know how familiar you are with the world of luxury watches, but tourbillons can cost as much as cars. You see, back before the iWatch and the Casio calculator watch, in the time even before batteries, watches needed to be wound by hand, and they weren't too accurate. You'd see your friend on the street and say, greetings, Leopold. Let us adjourn to the pub at seven of the clock for a mug of ale. He'd say, cool, or cooleth. But then when you got there, you'd have to wait for up to an hour. Not because he was an 18th century asshole, but that's just how out of sync his pocket watch could be. Watches were built to be used horizontally, and putting them in your pocket turned the mechanism on its side, decreasing the daily accuracy and forcing you to keep asking people on the street what time it really was. So then this dude, Abram Louis Briguet, designed a pretty cool mechanism to improve accuracy. The tourbillon was born the ultimate watch complication. Over the years, the tourbillon's mechanical achievement has given way to simpler quartz movements and now digital watches, but it has always held on to its elevated ornamental status and is still proudly displayed as the crown jewel on some of the world's most expensive watches. Breguet's tourbillon watches, for example, now sell for like $500,000. So why the history lesson? And what does it have to do with Astronic? Firstly, even though I don't like wearing watches, I find the history of their mechanics fascinating. And, you know, Wikipedia. Secondly, because you need to know this to understand why this $1,000 tourbillon might be a steal. So here's the tourbillon watch, inspired by the F-117 stealth bomber. You can see this inspiration in some of the details, like here, here, the sharp chiseled edges of the case, CNC milled from a single block of stainless steel, and the bezeled contour holding the glass in place with the visible screws. And then there's a silhouette of the F-117 in the multi-layered dial, framing the power reserve and guiding your eyes down to the whole reason we're here, the tourbillon. The tourbillon itself is not even just a regular old tourbillon. It's a 3D coaxial flying one designed by Astronic themselves. Because how the flying fish are they offering it for so little when a tourbillon should cost half a barnyard? I'm guessing it's part cutting out the middleman, a general benefit of many crowdfunding campaigns, and part not having the huge markup that renowned brands already have. Although cutting these corners means some things aren't quite there yet. I'm not sure if this is just because it's spanking new, but the leather strap feels horrible. It squeezes my wrist in all the wrong places. And although the steel bracelet does feel a little bit better, the watch is still pretty chunky. I mean, my wrists aren't too big and the watch hangs off on either side. It definitely draws attention with its huge space-like look. Great if that's what you're going for, but not really my style. It does feel nice to wind, you know, that feeling of I control time. Although I did forget a couple of times and ended up running out of juice. So much for the 42 hour power reserve indicator here. And I mean, there's, there's a lot going on with this watch visually, but not much actually happening. Some grand complication watches have moon calendars, show the date, chronographs. This watch has two complications. 
the tourbillon, and the power reserve. It looks like there's tons going on, but no, that's really just it. No date, no stopwatch, not even a second's end. Okay, so that's one watch, but they actually have two, which is quite unusual for a Kickstarter campaign. The Apache watch has the same case and colors, but is quite different beyond that. The Apache has a pretty cool skeleton see-through design, so you can see all the moving parts within the watch. I really like how intricate it looks, maybe because I like machines and intricate things. And even though I still don't really like watches, an automatic mechanical watch is definitely more my style. The cool thing is just that, that it's automatic, as opposed to the Nighthawk that you need to wind by hand. The Apache winds automatically as you move throughout your day. This feeling is kind of noticeable. It feels kind of weighted like you're spinning something around on your hand as the momentum builds up on your wrist. But it doesn't make too much noise and it's kind of the same as the automatics I've tried. The power reserve on this one is also bumped up to 80 hours, nearly double the tourbillons and way more than what's typically found on the market. I'm not sure how long you'd have to go move around to get it up to 80 hours, but I wore it for a few days last week and it never stopped, even when I was sleeping. The watches both share the same sapphire crystal glass with an anti-fingerprint coating, which I was surprised actually seems to work. I mean, I struggled to try to get my finger greasy fingerprints on it, and I did succeed a couple times, but you can't really tell they're there. They're more likely to shatter though on impact compared to your cheaper plastic glass. Of course, they both suffer one fatal flaw. They break if you drop them in water. Nah, just kidding. They're both waterproof up to 100 meters. I guess you'll all have realized by now that I'm not a watch reviewer. No, at Tech I Want, we review the latest innovations so you can get a feel for them before you order, but also because we love playing with all these new kinds of things. Today we're reviewing a luxury watch, tomorrow it's a plant pot, a camera, or some headphones. I kind of hope that one day we'll finally be able to review things like Teslas, but to get there, we really do need your help. If you like this video so far, give me a hand. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more weekly content like this, share it with a watch enthusiast, and leave me a comment. Hit me with your worst shot. What's the thing you least like about Astronic? What's the thing you least like about Tech I Want? About me? Just let me know in the comments. But yeah, if any of you are out there thinking, how is this a watch review? He missed out the vibrations per hour. What about the number of joules? Well, here's a list of tech specs for both watches. So did Astronic convince me to start wearing watches? No. They're pretty cool if you're into this attention-grabbing brutalism. They work great. It's a tourbillon and automatic movement at an affordable price. But at the end of the day, they're too bulky for me. I couldn't quite get the leather strap to feel comfortable. And it only tells the time. If you forced me, I'd pick the Apache. There's just something more appealing about looking through and seeing all the mechanics that work in the skeleton watch. Okay, uh, I think I have to put it back before anyone realizes it's gone. Or, you know, put it in my pocket. Till next time, I'm Dan, and this was Tech I Want.